think the important thing on our steel exposure is that in a comparative six months, uh, we had three months of the price bubble. I think around about October of 2008, the global economic crisis set in, and then we saw the decline. So on a like-for-like -like basis, we, we see that decline. For the first six months of last year and the second six months, we do see uh, an improvement. In fact, volumes are up 8% on the uh, sequential six months. Uh, and going into this calendar year, um, each month we're seeing better trading than the previous um, year's comparable month. So we aren't out of the woods. Um, the turnaround in steel uh, demand hasn't been at levels we would have liked to see, but they are encouraging signs. So for the full year, what do you think the figures from your manufacturing and processing division are going to look like? Do you think we'll be able to match last year? Well, look, if you, if you take that six months uh, performance into account where we've captured the, um, the steel bubble in, in the comparative year, it's most unlikely. I think the, the real issue is uh, going forward, how will steel prices recover? Of course, construction and manufacturing makes up the bulk of your revenue, about 70%, and that looks pretty solid. And just given the uncertainty that we are seeing at the moment in the South African economy, yeah, look, I think the, just picking up on the South African economy, the big issue uh, here is the 846 billion rand infrastructure spend that the Minister of Finance and President Zuma spoke about. And the sooner that comes to market, the better, especially as we enter sort of the post-World Cup infrastructure spend uh, period. Of course, we do know that many companies are still waiting for the tax to be turned on from that 846 billion rand. Of course, if, if you look at your order book, looking pretty good, it was up 8%, 32.7 billion rand. Does that include any of those infrastructure projects yet? Well, look, the, the order book, um, our order book is a two-year order book. A lot of our peers would just give you an order book with visibility well beyond two years. So we tend to look at two years. Um, the infrastructure rollout that's announced, the 846, that's year two that's yet to come. Our order book is signed contracts that we have secured. Uh, it's not pipeline or that sort of thing. So we look forward to the switch, uh, um, taps being turned on, as you say. What, what's included in that order book? I see about half of it is from McConnell Dow, yes. the, the, rest from the, the, the rest of your business. What kind of projects do you have in that order book? Um, we have, it, it, ref it really mirrors the um, a range of infrastructure services that we provide um, across the globe. Uh, in that order book, for example, you'll see about 7 billion of movements. That's open cast mining contracts, uh, mainly on the rest of the continent. Uh, so typically you would see the new uh, copper mining contract that we just signed in Zambia, for example. Um, in Australia, where we are involved across the value chain, we uh, have, for example, the Adelaide desalination plant, uh, which is part of our you know, a strategic thrust of entering the water market. That would be in, the, in South Africa, some of the projects uh, that we are working on uh, currently, like our roads and that sort of thing. So it reflects you know, the, the color of the average group, if you will. Just looking at Australia, perhaps, and you, you do talk about the strong rand in there, slowdown in domestic infrastructure spent, tighter margins in Australia. Um, the, in fact, their margin is down to 4.1%, but your operating margin in South Africa has improved quite nicely from 29 to 4.6%. Yes. Perhaps starting with Australia, obviously the strong rand, we don't know what's going to happen to that going forward. How else can you lift the operating margins in that business? Look, in, in Australia, the, we've said to the market for a long time now that the the high operating margin of McConnell Dowell is unsustainable. At the point where we were sitting at 6% and above, the big players, our key competitors in Australia, were sitting at 4% and slightly above that level. So we have indicated that that will come back. Uh, you see it coming back now um, into more realistic uh, levels. There were some factors at play there. Uh, one project in particular in pipelines was quite problematic. And then we invested uh, a good amount in tender costs uh, for a large infrastructure project, and that came through affecting the operating margin there. Um, but Australia, the Australian government has published uh, Australia Infrastructure, which is a, a rollout plan. And you see in Australia, their order book uh, composition, over 50% is from the public sector. In South Africa, 58% is from the private sector. Uh, thus uh, reflecting the slowdown in public sector spend. The margin uh, in our construction and engineering business locally is a very pleasing result for us. 
in that it's, it has jumped uh, operating margins up 95%. And the reason for that is twofold. We have some big projects coming through, but also we've taken the, the management view that you know, we can't control the demand for steel in China, but we can control the way we run our business. So we've been taking a lot of um, deep introspective looks at our cost, at the way our teams are organized around business development, the way we procure our goods and services, and you're seeing some uh, contribution uh, to that improvement in margin there. We'll talk to, uh, perhaps about the private sector in South Africa. <coughs> what are you seeing there? What sort of projects are you signing up in the private sector? Well, if you look at last year, it went, uh, it went a bit quiet, notably in the mining side, as commodity prices uh, went downwards. Uh, we're seeing a recovery there. We've, in fact, signed a few more mining contracts. So there seems to be some revived activity. Um, some projects that were delayed, uh, clients are calling, discussions are starting up again. It is early days, um, but there is uh, almost a reawakening happening, but we're far from out of the woods in terms of the general economic uh, conditions globally. Well, Roger, one thing that analysts will say is you have a strong balance sheet, cash position very strong. You've got net cash of 7.7 .7 billion rand. You say in the commentary you plan to benefit from potential opportunities in this tight credit cycle. What sort of, sort of opportunities are we looking at out there? How are you going to spend that cash? Yeah, you know, our, our balance sheet is a very uh, important competitive advantage for the Avenge Group. You have, as you say, uh, all this cash. Um, our unencumbered cash is more, it's close to the 3 billion rand mark because we have advanced payments and that sort of thing. Um, so when you bid for a large infrastructure project, generally clients want performance bonds to be put down. We don't have to go to the market to raise uh, funding for our bonding um, capacity. We have that capacity. So we can go to a client and say, yes, we can. You know, um, So that's a, a good competitive advantage for us. And then secondly, we have indicated that we would like to grow into uh, new areas further along the infrastructure value chain. And we, we are assessing those opportunities as well. So um, uh, keeping that balance sheet strong as a positioning for growth at this point in time is key to our strategy.